Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Georgia Purdom, and I am here with Dr. Jennifer Rivera, and we are going to be talking about our Explore Days and our Explore Camps and some of the fun things we're going to illustrate for you here, or experiment, some cool experiments that we do during those days, including making slime, okay? So you are going to want to pay attention because yes. Pretty much every child, every tween, and even some teens out there I know love to make this stuff, love to make this goo. So you want to pay attention for a really cool version of it um, that we're going to be making. So Dr. Rivera here really heads up um, our Explore programs and camps here at the museum. So she's going to be talking a little bit about what's in store for uh, the rest of the school year as well as this summer. Yes, yeah, so coming up over the next few months through May, we have Explore Days, which is a one-day program, uh, 9 a.m. to about 3.30 p.m., where kids can come and get four hands-on workshops and a variety of science topics. Uh, so we have several coming up. We have genetics coming up in February and physical science in March. Uh, in April, we have zoology, and then in May, we have dinosaurs and botany. So there are still lots of spots available if you would like to register your child for a one-day program. Uh, and if you just can't fit that one-day program into your schedule or your kid is just enthusiastic, enthusiastic about science. We do offer five-day science camps this summer. So in June, our five-day science camp is going to be the 10th through the 14th. And in July, we have a five-day science camp, the 22nd through the 26th. Each camp will have a variety of different topics. And then we also are offering our very first three-day forensics camp, which I'm really excited about because that's my passion. Uh, June 22nd through the 28th, where kids will get three days where they get to solve case studies and learn how to sketch out crime scenes oh, and yeah. dust for fingerprints and do all kinds of cool things. In fact, they're going to learn how to dust for fingerprints, which I'm going to teach Dr. Purdom today in one of our activities. So I'm really excited to get started. So we're going to start with just a few of the properties of magnetism, which we learn about in Explore Physical Science in March. Mm -hmm. So first, uh, we'd like to teach kids and let them actually visualize magnetic field lines. And so what's really great is, you know, magnets, there's basically three elements on the periodic table that are can be made into permanent magnets, and that's iron, nickel, and cobalt. So usually when you see devices like this, it's kind of a mixture of the three. So we do have a certain amount of magnetic filings inside these little platforms that you see here. And then magnets have three basic properties, attractive, and then repelling, and then directive, right? Because a magnet will always point north, okay? Yeah. So first we're going to demonstrate attractive. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Prime, if you'll take the two magnets, and we're going to put... Now, obviously, if we have red and red, right, those are the same poles. They're going to repel well, each other. So let's do attractive <laughs> first, all right? So if you lay down the magnets onto the platform, you're going to see and put red. Let's put the blue and red head to head, right? You're going to see how they are attracting. See how quickly they pull together? And you can actually see how the magnetic powder is pulling together. If we remove one of the magnets, right? Then you actually get a really nice visual mm -hmm. of the two poles, and you can actually see yeah. the magnetic field lines. And what's great when we do physical science is we teach the kids magnetic field lines of the Earth are actually evidence of a young Earth. Right. Because they revert. They, they've shown, mm -hmm. uh, we can tell that, that they've reversed very, very quickly, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. probably as a result of the flood, of a, of a major catastrophic event that occurred with mm -hmm. the flood. Yeah, absolutely. And so that is, you can see, attractive. Now, when we repel, we can make it look completely different, which is really kind of cool. So you have to shake it up so you get your particles random again. All right, go ahead. We're going to do red to red, and you're going to see what happens. See how the magnetic particles are repelling each other. They are not going to go together because we have like poles uh, repelling each other. So the kids get a really good visual of how magnetism works uh, when we use the magnetic boards. Now, something else that's really cool is making magnetic goo. <laughs> and a lot of times, they, you know, the kids watch that on the Internet, and they're like, well, can you really do that? Does it really I know, work? because I've seen those on Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, before they'll come up in my feed. And I'm always looking at cool science things, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, uh, I don't know, you know, whether to believe that or not. So. We're going to show you that it's possible. We are going to make a batch today <laughs> and show you how it is attracted to magnets. But first, you need to put on your gloves, Dr. Purdom. I know. Okay. And Safety what age, first. What age groups are the Explore Days for in the camps? They are for fourth grade through twelfth grade, and we are offering our very first Explore Junior next year with Ruth Carter. That will be kindergarten through fifth grade. Oh, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have yes. been really wanting mm -hmm. that, and so that's mm -hmm. something that we wanted to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're excited about that. All right, I'm ready. Okay, so the first thing you need, if you want to do this at home, you can gather these supplies and you can do it. We're going to post the recipe later for you. Uh, so you need some distilled water. 
And you need some type of iron oxide. Now we're going to use iron filings today, but you can purchase this right off Amazon and it is synthetic black iron oxide. So that's probably what we recommend that you use at home. And then you do need uh, some kind of liquid starch. This only costs a dollar at Kroger. So very inexpensive. All right. And those are the things you need. And then you do need glue. Now you can use white Elmer's glue. <laughs> we're going to use a really cool sparkle glow in the dark pink glue today. All right. So the very first step is to open your glue and empty as much of it as possible into your disposable plastic container. I would not recommend doing this in your mom's expensive Tupperware containers, <laughs> please, <laughs> but something that you can throw away. So you want to get as much of the glue out of out of the bottle as possible into your container. I'm working on it. I've watched my daughter make slime quite a bit, um, and she usually wants me to participate, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's just, <laughs> <ugh>. <laughs> I'm past the slime days, okay? I still think it's cool, though, so is that enough or should yeah. I? Yeah. Okay. All right, now, as, if, when you get as much of the glue out of the bottle as you can, you are going to put in one-third cup water, which is about 70 milliliters of distilled water into your glue. So you can go ahead and pour that in. You're going to then put the lid of the glue bottle back on and you're going to shake it really well so that you can get as much of the glue out of the bottle as possible. Okay. Definitely make sure you put the lid back on. <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad, which is why we're wearing lap yeah. coats so we don't get totally messy here. Okay. And then you're going to dump it out into your container with the glue. All right, so the next step is to put a generous amount, all right, they recommend two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. I recommend probably a little bit more than that uh, of your, either your synthetic iron oxide or iron filings. Okay. So we're going to use iron filings today. So you're going to go ahead and put those in. All right. And the last step is to add one half cup, all right, of the liquid starch or about 120 milliliters. Yeah, I've never seen it made with this before. So mm. this was like a unique mm -hmm. thing, and I think it, I like it better. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a plastic spoon at home, you can use that. We're going to use a stirring rod. You can also just go ahead and mix it with your hands, but I think it's better to get it started uh, with some kind of stirring rod. You're just going to mix it up, and you're going to find that it starts to get almost like a very gooey substance, like you can see here. Mm -hmm. It is going to be black in color because of the iron filing. Right. So it won't it be color. pink anymore. Right. It's not going to be as pink <laughs> as But it will be glittery. It so. will be glittery. <laughs> Yes. If you like the glitter effect. So you just have to keep mixing it. Yeah, this is the part that gets messy. <laughs> Which is why you might want gloves. And at any point, whenever you just want to get your hands dirty, you can go ahead and stick your hands into this substance. It's non-toxic. And you can start to just kind of knead it like, like bread dough is what you kind of want to do. There you go. Oh, See yeah. how quickly it's... Uh, and you can yes. hear it, too. <laughs> I like doing this better with gloves on. Maybe I wouldn't have been so opposed <laughs> if I had gloves on. Yeah. Eventually, all the water will absorb into the goo. So but you just want to cool. keep... Well, yeah, it's right. cool because it's slime. You know, it's not just making slime for the sake of mm -hmm. making slime. It's slime for the sake of doing something, showing something cool um, that God has actually created. I mean, magnetic north is very important for birds and their abilities to migrate. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, all of those and even other animals will use that as well. So um, mm -hmm. it's an important comp. Humans use it <laughs> in the form of compasses to tell us where to go. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's neat to be able to investigate a property like that. Oh, yeah. It's looking great. Feeling the slime here. It's coming together. You can see it's kind of really pretty glittery. So. I see the magnet's already attracted to it. <laughs> the magnet's already yeah. attracted to her yeah. magnetic goo through the container. Oh, you it's can see it's already attracted. Container. <laughs> That's funny. Now you can use any kind of magnet for this, but I do recommend you get those neo magnets that are much stronger. They are very, very strong, strong. Uh, and you'll get a much better visual result uh, if you, yeah. you know, if you because purchase those magnets. They're so strong, we have trouble getting them apart. Yes. So <laughs> that's how strong they are. Okay, is that enough? All right, I would say, yeah, I would say you could take it out and let's okay. let's pour it out on the table here. It's looking great. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, lots of goo. Okay, so then we're gonna take you take this. your magnet. Mm -hmm. 
And you can see wow. how quickly uh, your magnetic goo is attracted to the magnetic properties. I know, that's so awesome. It just like totally envelops it and takes over it. So, yep. So that is pretty awesome. So in March, the kids will be making this magnetic goo and everybody will get to take some home. Oh, that'll that be even. I know. <laughs> I love things where you can take science home with you. So great. That'll be fantastic. All right. Are you going to take your gloves off, Dr. Perm, and put on a clean pair this no, time, no. okay? <laughs> you better believe I Because we're going to talk about one other property of magnets that we teach in our Explore Forensics. Because what's really neat is your sweat pores on your friction-rich skin, which are on your hands and the entire surface mm -hmm. of your feet, are constantly secreting fatty acids and amino acids and other chemical signatures. So because we're constantly you know, secreting uh, you know, fluids right. in the exact pattern right. of our fingerprint, you, know, you leave behind an exact copy of your fingerprint right. everywhere you go. And it everywhere. only takes about one second. Mm -hmm. Well, they've developed something called magnetic powder, and forensic scientists have been using it for a number of years, but they actually prefer that over black powder now because it's so much cleaner. So yeah. I'm going to oh, show yeah. you why, because it's really cool. All right? So the first thing you have to do is you're going to leave behind, oh, I'll leave my handprint behind okay, on the paper. Say, yeah, you can't do it. Right. <laughs> so all you have to do is just touch a piece of paper very quickly, and the kids will get to practice this, uh -huh. you know, when they come. Now I'm going to touch it a couple times because my ridges are worn down and I have very dry skin. So, <laughs> okay. All right. So what we're going to do is use magnetic powder today. Okay. It yeah. looks like this. All right. And it comes in little kits that you can buy. And with that is something called the magnetic wand. Okay. All right. So you're going to take that magnetic wand and you're going to put it into the magnetic powder. Okay, and you can see how the magnetic powder sticks to the bottom of the magnetic wand. So now you are going to dust with that. All okay. right. All over this paper very lightly. All right, you're just going to start dusting. I've told uh, our forensic students before that I literally don't leave fingerprints behind, and that's exactly what that looks like. <laughs> so, <laughs> because my fingerprint ridges are so worn down. So we're going to get uh, someone else here. Miss Kim, would you mind just putting your hand on there real quick? Just put it right down for me. There you go. Let's see. I bet Miss Kim has some we're going to be able to see today. Oh, yeah, Look how cool. quickly hers come up. Yes. <laughs> I literally don't leave any at all. And, and that's proof of it. happens with age. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> lots of washing your hands. Over Excellent. Here. So yeah. with just see. that, yeah, that's perfect. So yeah. with just a slight dusting, immediately wow. we can see Miss Kim's five fingerprints show up that quickly. And yeah. so it works on a variety of surfaces. And so what's really neat is these are so clean that all you have to do is hold your wand over the cup and pull up the end towards you. Oh. Pull this up oh. towards you. And it, it releases, mm -hmm, it releases a mag, mm -hmm, and then all the powder goes back into the jar. So it's really neat and it's very uh, recyclable because you can clean up after yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the kids will get to practice with this uh, during Explore Camp this summer. Oh, okay. And then we just had Explore Forensics a couple weeks ago uh, and the kids had a great time. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> practicing on glass and cell phones and other things like that you might find. Because it's amazing. You know, we talk about this with um, DNA, you know, even in the field I'm in in genetics, you leave DNA everywhere just like you leave mm -hmm. your fingerprints everywhere. So it's just, it's part of <laughs> you're leaving behind everywhere. That's why it's hard to commit crimes th these days <laughs> because we, people can figure that out pretty easily mm -hmm. so that's good so Absolutely. anyway so I hope that you're really excited mm -hmm. to come and explore um, with us um, here at the Creation Museum for these days and the camps and we just keep having more and more offerings like this mm -hmm. and we're so excited to be able to offer that to everyone yeah so thank you so much for joining us today and we'll see you soon